artificial intelligence exactly. I know that it's about computers doing things better than humans and then learning that behavior, but I also know that it's about so much more than that. So many of us have this fear of robots taking over our brains and taking, we've watched those movies. But what exactly is artificial intelligence? How are people using it today? How do you explain artificial intelligence to people? Sure. Well, so we think about artificial intelligence as the biggest overarching category. And we think about that as basically machines doing things that humans would call smart. A good example of that. What's a good example, for example, of a deep learning online, something that... So, well, the, the one that people will be most familiar with is Google, uh, because yeah. that's how uh, we surface all of the world's information. Uh, Google has an algorithm where they're going to look at the links between different pages on the internet, as well as a variety of other factors, like who authored it, um, how reputable are they, and on and on and on and on. And, the, and their algorithm will suggest, based on the search query that you type in, what is going to be the best response. And so that is the biggest AI application that you probably have used on the internet today. I personally wonder about using AI to help solve our world's biggest problems. So can AI be utilized to aid, for example, the problems of global warming? No, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so one of the great examples of what AI is doing to stop global warming is um, we're using satellite, uh, and Microsoft is actually leading this effort, we're using satellite imagery to look at the uh, forest cover. And what, there was a study that came out recently that said if we could just improve reforestation uh, across the planet, we would go a huge way towards uh, meeting our climate goals. And so they're looking uh, from, from the sky how you know, uh, lush do these forests look. They're then comparing that with U.S. Forest Service data that's on the ground saying, okay, this is what the forest actually looks like in terms of how lush it is, how many trees, or, or, or whatnot. And they're creating a a model that will allow them, just based on that data, to take an image of a forest anywhere in the world and figure out what is the health of that forest. There's a million other ways that this can be done as well in terms of uh, analyzing uh, CO2 production across cities and figuring out where it, how is it going up, how is it going down, what can be done to control it. Uh, but there's a million ways that it could be done. Wow, so, so for, who is doing the study, for example, like how can we support that process? Like, how can we be involved? Or so, so there's a couple of ways that you can get involved. So, number one, um, the major users of AI, whether they're Microsoft, Google, Intel, companies like that tend to have uh, whole divisions or initiatives that are designed to partner with nonprofits to give them the tools that they need. There's also um, a group called AI Commons, uh, which is being spearheaded by Yashua Bengio, who is one of the three godfathers of AI, where they're matching AI talent um, with real causes throughout the world that, uh, that need addressing. So while I'm here at the conference, I get an email from Northeastern University where my daughter is a behavioral neuroscience major. And they today announced that they are starting a brand new initiative. It's a brand new institute called the Experiential Artificial Intelligence Institute. And they're putting $50 million into this institute, hiring 30 brand new teachers, and also utilizing a lot of their other uh, institutes that are already part of Northeastern. So what is the future of artificial intelligence? Well, as it turns out, at the back table where I was sitting in one of the conferences are the students and the teachers from Catholic Memorial High School. These are students that are interested in finding out about artificial intelligence. So I thought we should ask the students and the teachers, what are the interesting things about artificial intelligence that you are interested in? And what is the future of AI? I'm Brian Mulcahy. I'm the science chair at Catholic Memorial High School. And so being in Boston and having this conference in our backyard, I thought, you know, as, as we know it's an industry level kind of conference, it's still kind of worthwhile for the boys to come check it out and see what the current uh, discussions are, what the industry is kind of thinking about, and then they can have a more informed decision. I'm um, Ethan Bartuka. I'm Jaden Woodard. Uh, Rona Harley. I'm Sam Misha. No, I'm a senior. I'm a senior also. I'm as well a senior. I'm a junior. 
Um, I, I joined this class just because I think AI is the future and I think um, artificial intelligence is, is going to take a lot of jobs and um, I think it's, it's important to get on that side of it. I chose to take this class because AI is all around us. I just wanted to learn more about it and not just know what's on top, just the surface, but I want to go more in depth about it and understand what it really is. Uh, I kind of took the class as like I saw it as like an opportunity to open up something I've never really thought about learning about in like so far. And from what I've seen from the class, like I've taken a big interest in it and like it's like something I'm looking forward to, maybe studying college or something like that. Technology impacts the world every day, so learning about AI will really be helpful, kind of like in the school too, so I was really interested in the class. It seems like AI kind of connects in every different industry. You know, if you're thinking about uh, business, if you're thinking about uh, ethics, if you're thinking about environmental science, if you're thinking about art, music, AI is going to play a part in everything. And it's going to blend the worlds of statistics, it's going to blend the worlds of um, just regular data collection, it's going to impact uh, the way we use our economy. And so from, you know, in AI's development thus far, the main benefactors have been people like me, basically white guys, um, with the computer science degree. And now we're starting to see two, you know, India as well as the United States and, and China kind of being the kind of three tribes, right? Um, so being from an all boys school and still trying to, we're still trying to get more voices at the table, different experiences with, um, with less of that bias, trying to think about how everyone could benefit from AI as opposed to the privileged few. So it's really important that we think about, you know, including uh, people who may not have considered going into AI, um, more women in the field, etc. And the major, major takeaway for us was how the, um, just the pure personalization thought, which at least when we went into it before knowing too much about the space, we were like, we, we laid down the default strategy, working and that's it. The next part is data science is almost disrupting every industry now, and e commerce and retail is definitely one of the most impacted industry by the data science. Uh, I said at the beginning of my talk that unfortunately some repairs in the business uh, as an impact of the uh, e-commerce when it came out, right? And they didn't invest enough in the e-commerce. I think now it's the same story, like with the data science changing uh, the world as we know it, like most of the companies want to invest in data science because they don't want to end up with the same uh, thing that other companies ended up with. They didn't invest in e-commerce when it came out. That being said, now I think data science. We saw. We I think every day we see the impact of data science. When you go to search on things, uh, the the way we see, you see the results is now personalized towards your interest, and it is different than what the results the person sit next to you. If they use the same keywords, they will get different results. If, if you are searching on any of the e-commerce websites.